Berlin by Night by M. Riff Chapter 25, Bob They walked towards the canteen with dragonflies flying above their heads. Bob and another young fellow were sitting at a lunch table in the middle of the canteen, which was separated from the rest of the hall with partitions made of recycled boards recovered from industrial pallets. They were playing a war video game on a big screen. Roberto glanced at the screen and asked, Can we release the game soon? Bob answered, Not yet. We need to fix a few details first. If we want to survive in the global market, the game has to be perfect. Roberto gave him the hard drive and asked, Can you hack into this? Bob looked at it and said, I can try, but I'm worried it might blow up. The other guy, focused on the game, said, A few days ago, I upgraded ZZ's sense of smell. Now it can sniff out over a hundred things, including explosives. He added, The problem is, the poor dragonfly has been hanging around those canahop plants too much, and now it's always sleeping. Three dragonflies were on a big fridge, their usual spot, recharging. He looked at them and said, ZZ, come check out this box. But ZZ didn't react. XX nudged it and yelled, Hey! Wake up! You've got a job. I told you to stay away from those plants, but you didn't listen. Key Bob looked at the other guy and said, You need to tone down ZZ's smell. The guy replied, They're like our guards. They have to smell stuff like dogs do. Key Bob said, They also need to watch over the place. A sleeping guard dog isn't very useful. Azer asked, Aren't they just drones? Key Bob explained, They're genetically modified hybrids. They're way cheaper to produce. Why why protested from where they were perched, If you call us cheaper one more time, we'll go on strike. Finally, ZZ took off, flew to the lunch table, and clumsily landed on it. It flew up again, hovered over the hard drive box, and sniffed it from different angles. Finally, it said in a tired voice, nothing suspicious. Instead of going back to its usual spot on the fridge, it landed again on the table and fell asleep. Roberto pointed to the hard drive and said, it's worse than I thought. Curious, Azer asked, what do you mean? Roberto explained, if you can't figure out what the enemy is thinking, you have to be ready for the worst. The guy across the table nodded, yes, it's one of our main rules for designing war games. The professor said, it's the same with brain diseases. If you can't find the cause of the symptoms in the brain itself, they may be due to cancer elsewhere in the body. Key Bob suggested, maybe they put a GPS device in it. When they know where it is, they send a missile. It seemed Key Bob was still talking about the video game. But he added, hey, remember that time we dealt with a GPS device? Stormtroopers paid us a not-so-friendly visit. Roberto turned to Azer, explaining, a few months back, Key Bob tried to hack into a foreign government's hard drive. He didn't know that it had a GPS device. Suddenly, helicopters and stormtroopers were everywhere. He pointed at the fridge with bullet holes, saying, they even wrecked our fridge. The young guy, still focused on his game, smirked, what else did you expect? They were invading the Chaos Republic. He shot an enemy soldier on the screen, and jubilantly said, Gotcha, jerk. Still playing the game, he suggested to Key Bob, Why don't you microwave the hard drive? Puzzled Azer asked, Microwave the hard drive? Bob explained, smiling, I've tweaked a microwave to block the GPS signals. He added, Not fully tested, though. Roberto agreed, it seems to be our only shot. Let's go. Key Bob and Roberto headed to an old industrial elevator, a metal cage on vertical rails in a brick shaft. They got in, hit a button, and it rumbled down like an old train. <laughs>